This video is going to be a look at the Lions offense from 2023 and some of the elements that I find most interesting. In this video, I'm going to look at 12 personnel groupings and some of the formations and tendencies or patterns that I see and the things that Ben Johnson does in certain situations. A couple of observations. Number one, 12 personnel. We focus on three formations in this video. This first one will be ace, basically quarterback under center, Derek Goff. Two tight ends, one on each side. So ace formation, running back on the midline. With the quarterback under center, one tight end to the right, one tight end to the left. This particular play happens to be what I would call F counter, guard pulling and kicking, backside tight end, Laporta pulling and wrapping, wild card game against the Rams, really ran the ball well against them, uh, just moved the ball throughout the game very, very effectively and efficiently against them, if you ask me. Same personnel, same formation against the Chargers, I think, I think week 13. They motioned to this often, number one. Number two, there was a period of time where some of these run concepts were different depending on which back was in the game. Jameer Gibbs uh, versus David Montgomery kind of makes sense. It's a toss play with Gibbs into the boundary, first of all. Second of all, again, you notice they'll motion the two tight ends from an outside position in. This is Brock Wright to the right-hand side, Laporta to the left. I really hope they're able to bring Brock Wright back. I think he's a, a UFA at this point, underrated player, Suffered an injury late in the season. Kind of gave him some question marks going into the 49ers game. Underrated guy in the receiving game. Of course, he has the game-winning touchdown against the Jets in 2022, late in a road, road win in New York. Also a really good blocker. In this case, the motion Laporta across left to right. Look at the timing and how close Laporta is to golf on this reverse pivot. Toss to Gibbs, short toss, and then he cuts it all the way back across the field, right to left. The play calling isn't drastically different throughout 2023, depending on which back is out there. I feel like some of the differential between the play, same end, same play end zone angle here, by the way, I feel like some of the differential in play calls early in the year was kind of by design. Look at the timing again that I mentioned from the All-22 between Goff's foot, his left foot as he reverse pivots, and then Laporta clearing. I mean, you don't really have much room or margin for error here these guys execute this stuff flawlessly even though toss isn't a, a foundational element of the ben johnson and detroit lions run game ace formation under center one tight end to each side of the formation to me seems more run based regardless of which are the two tight ends that are out there in this case dan skipper has reported as an eligible second tight end so still 12 personnel but jumbo 12 if you will Split zone concept almost has a trap a flavor to it with Laporta trapping what I believe is a D tackle um, in the Broncos defense. We'll let you see it one more time from the all 22 and then the end zone angle. I think they're more run based out of this formation where there's a tight end to one side and a tight end to the other, at least uh, from, from the film that I have. You can see it's a two deep shell by the Broncos. Another thing to mention is this is a first and second down formation, not a third and six formation. Obviously, you're not going to have two tight ends on the field. So it makes sense that it will be more run-based, if you will. This is the player that's being trapped. What they've done by having Skipper on the field is he's going to dig out the edge defender, in this case 56, and then Laporta on the split zone is going to go get 92, the defensive tackle, in their base 3-4. Gibbs hits it front side, inside linebackers, I think, play it wrong. And he almost scores on this thing, 34-yard gain. That was a critical game, if you ask me, against the Broncos at home because they, it showed that when they wanted to, the offense could pretty much do whatever they wanted against a team that had been surging. And from here on out, the offense was, was really sharp. Of course, they only scored 19 points, 21 unofficially against the Cowboys on the road. But generally, the offense was rolling. Let's just see one more angle of this formation and then the play, and then we'll move on to a second formation where the Lions put both tight ends uh, on the same side. You can see this is Skipper to the left, and then Laporta to the right. Gives you an idea of how versatile Laporta is, was, as a rookie in 2023. He can line up at receiver and do a legitimate job as an outside wide receiver or a slot, if you will, and then used across multiple run-blocking schemes Truly an amazing draft pick. Shocking now to look back and think that he wasn't taken um, in the first round, given all the things that he was able to do quickly uh, with the Lions.
Again, 12 personnel, ace formation, one tight end on each side. Second formation that we'll deal with here out of 12 personnel, I'll call it twin wing. Technically, this is not a, a wing alignment. It's a reverse wing alignment. There's a, a saying uh, for this tight end alignment that I will not repeat in video form, but you would think that two tight ends on the same side would be a little bit more run heavy. It's not, actually, at least for the data that I have. Now, I'm not going to give you run pass percentages because I don't have that broken down necessarily by each formation. I'm just going off of what I've seen. I think I have nine plays here in this cut up. And only one of them is a run concept out of 12 personnel. You've got two tight ends on the same side. St. Brown's going to motion down. Consider this an establishing shot or establishing play for this formation. Give the end zone angle one time. It's Montgomery off tackle to the tight end wing side. Normally, you have the inside tight end. Uh, in this case, it's Brock Wright on the line of scrimmage and the outside tight end Laporta off. They've reversed this. I have found this formation to be more pass-oriented. It makes sense. You've got a great play-action quarterback, Jared Goff, number one. Number two, you've got a great run game that consistently churns out yards no matter which running back is back there, point number two. And then finally, it's under center, and you keep the, uh, the defense's base personnel on the field in most situations. That's what the Vikings have responded with here. Five, two, three, four, whatever you want to call it. depends on how old you are, when you were introduced to defensive terminology. Looks like you've got two tight ends and a wide receiver, Jamison Williams, on the same side pre-snap. They motion Williams across. Ends up being essentially the same formation I showed you a moment ago. Against the Broncos, play action. St. Brown sits down. One of the landmarks of the Lions offense, many offenses, is the hash because you know where it is. Quarterback, receiver, have a landmark. There's less green space there to try to negotiate how deep the route should be and where it should be horizontally. If you've ever tried to coach football or any sport on an unlined field, good luck. It's difficult to, to have landmarks for kids or players to utilize. So when I say landmark, that's what I mean. You know where the route will finish up. Jarrett Goff knows generally where the guy's going to be. It's a flood concept in some ways, except St. Brown, instead of going to the sideline, is sitting down here and you've got a player that's kind of out-leveraged himself, inside linebacker as well as widened up with Montgomery. Golf is excellent on the play-action stuff. It, it teams up nicely with the run game. In these games later on in the season where the run game was established, really defenses had no choice. In this 12 personnel grouping, how do teams line up to the twins, the, the twin side, the two-receiver side? In this case, the Rams have widened up an outside linebacker so that they can keep their too deep structure and not give away to Goff and Ben Johnson what the coverage is going to be pre-snap. It's one of the benefits, if you ask me, of throwing the ball on play action concepts out of 12 personnel. You get the base defense on the field, alleviate the need to have to deal with a nickel defender, a fifth DB. In some cases, it's team's uh, most talented or, or most versatile DB for the Ravens, for example, Kyle Hamilton. For the Lions defense, Brian Branch, two spectacular players who can play out in space, play safety, and even cover outside, outside receivers if you need them to. It's play action, and where do they go? The same side of the field where I illustrated pre-snap. The two-receiver side against the, the Rams in the wild card game happens to be an amazing throw. I think this is the first possession for the Lions of the game in the first quarter. Brilliant stuff. They were rolling early against the Rams, as, as the Rams offense was as well. Not sure why this one got out of order. This is the first play I showed you from this cut-up. I would call this twin wing, as I referred to earlier, but originally pre-snap, it's Trey in the terminology that I know. You may have um, other names for the personnel, but you can see from the end zone angle, wide open, the inside linebacker and the safety expanded <clears throat> with the running back in the flats, and St. Brown, who you would have th thought was going to run a flood concept to the sideline. In this case, he sat it down on the near side hash. <clears throat> against the Vikings, again, quick snap. Another thing that Ben Johnson does a great job of varying, not just, okay, you're 12 personnel, you're run heavy. A couple of formations have different run pass tendencies, if you ask me. He changes up the snap. At least three or four times a game, you get stuff like this. They line up quick and snap it quick. It's jumbo 12, same exact formation that I've talked to he, uh, talked about here in the second cut-up. Twin wing, because you got two Receivers to one side, that's the twin. It's to the downside here. St. Brown and Jamison Williams are the twins, almost stacked. And you got the wing side up to the top. 
tight end wing, two tight ends. Sometimes it's a tight end and a fullback. Vikings happen to be in what looks like a 5-1 look, inside linebacker kind of walking out late to the Twins. Again, by keep by keeping teams' base defense on the field, you're forcing someone, either an outside linebacker or an inside linebacker, into a coverage space that normally would be occupied by a nickel. Essentially, the wide side of the field, curl flat area, is wide open oftentimes against these base defensive looks, whether it's a 3-4 or a 4-3 structure, which you'll see one here in a moment against the 49ers. Same formation, twin wing, two receivers down to the side, bottom side, stacked again, and then Laporta, and I think that's uh, Frisker, uh, Ferkser up at the top side, who's going to insert like a Jill Iso in the C-gap between the left tackle and the tight end. Play action, and then delayed release by Laporta out into the flats, into the boundary. So one of the things about Ben Johnson that I think just makes sense, his offense just makes sense, is he'll attack to both sides of a formation. Believe me when I tell you there's offensive coordinators at every level who will only attack to one side of a formation. What I just talked about on the previous play was attacking to the curl flat area to the side where there was two receivers. It was the opposite alignment. Let me flip back real quick so you guys can see it. It's the downside of the screen still, but it's the opposite alignment, meaning it's to the offense's left. You remember Gibbs ends up catching the ball down here in the flats for an eight-yard game where he gets out of bounds, I think late second quarter. This one early in the game, I think first possession against the 49ers, is attacking to the opposite side where you have the two tight ends, where you have the wing. So you've got variability in run pass based on formation out of 12 personnel. you got variability in not just run pass, but directional variability, directional uh, unpredictability. You can attack to the right side of the formation and the left side. If you're a Lions fan, you've only been exposed to my work for the better part of the 2023 season, maybe a little bit of 2022. Maybe you haven't heard me talk about this. There are a number of offensive coordinators can name two, but I'm not going to do that to be um, respectful at this point. There are at least two that I can think of who only attack to certain sides of a formation, depending on what formation they line up in. Here, Ben Johnson illustrates that even though we have our two most talented pass catchers, well, I mean, Sam Laporta certainly would be the number two guy on that team, but we have, from a positional standpoint, two wide receivers, generally the most talented pass catchers on a team, lined up to one side, we're going to attack you to the other, even though on this particular snap, the 49ers happen to be in a nickel alignment. So one of the things that's most enjoyable about Ben Johnson's offense from my perspective to watch and probably most difficult for um, other teams' defensive coordinators to deal with is that you've got plays that attack to the two-receiver side, plays that attack here, plays that attack on the interior, run concepts, obviously, keeping you honest from a horizontal and a vertical standpoint and being unpredictable with run pass concepts. Same formation, twin wing, except the receivers aren't stacked. And once again, you got a play action concept to the running back. Montgomery leaking out into the flats. This is what I would call a real flood concept where St. Brown's either going to go to the sideline or sit down at another landmark, the bottom of the numbers. Montgomery into the flats when inside linebacker slips near the top of the numbers. Goff gets Montgomery the football for a 14-yard gain. The directional unpredictability or versatility, if you will, the run pass tendencies being balanced generally. I'm not sure why so many teams, so many offensive coordinators and staffs with all the data they have are so heavily weighted towards the pass in certain situations 12 personnel for the Lions. I'm not advocating that it should be their their base offensive structure, but it damn sure is one of the ones that was the most effective in 2023, if you ask me. And a lot of it had to do with how Ben Johnson calls the plays to attack both sides of a formation, force the defense to be honest. Third 12 personnel formation that I'll talk to you about and show you some film of, call it Trey Wing. In some cases, people would just call it Trey. Basically, you still have two tight ends on the field, 12 personnel. They end up on the same side in Ben Johnson's offense in 2023. They generally ended up on the same side to the field. You can see that the ball is on the hash. Three receivers to the field. Two of them are tight ends. Why? Well, you're, you're, you're causing problems for the defense with the boundary side safety. 
and some of these teams, particularly the Vikings, had real trouble just getting lined up to it with some of their calls. So what I mean is you'll see from the end zone angle very clearly that three players are absolutely out of position to do anything with this strong side run. Vikings in love, for whatever reason, in both contests with the Lions, blitzing the safety off the weak side uh, against 12 personnel just didn't make sense from a formation standpoint. You can see that the backside inside linebacker incapable of getting over the top at all. You've got backside DN, Hunter, and sa and the safety, both occupying the same gap, C gap. Somebody does have to be responsible for quarterback boot. You don't need two guys there when you got a threat to the field like the Lions present. Really, Ben Johnson, there are times where he's predictable. It's very few and far between. This is one of them. It's generally going to be a run to the side where you've got two tight ends because it's the base defense on the field and off screen you've got a corner widened up to line up over the number one receiver. This is the same play from the end zone angle, by the way. You get a really great view. 40 is unblocked as the backside inside linebacker. Perhaps you've got a hold on the front side, you know, no problem. But 40 is the backside inside linebacker, totally unblocked. He's just too far away. You've only got two gaps here, B gap, C gap, and three players, 40, Hunter, and then the safety is off screen to our left. Three guys to do with two gaps doesn't work when you got three to the field. Lions just totally outflanked, if you ask me. And it happened often in both of their games against, uh, excuse me, the Vikings totally outflanked. And it happened often, if you ask me, in both of their games against the Lions. Happened to the 49ers as well. Causes problems with the boundary side safety. Look how the boundary side safety reacts when St. Brown switches sides of the field. So originally it was twins to the boundary, the short side of the field. When St. Brown goes to the opposite side, they don't run the safety over there with him, and they can't roll up the nickel. Why? It's 12 personnel. There is no nickel on the field. you got base 4-3 defense for the 49ers, and all they do is walk the boundary side safety down, essentially putting him responsible for weak side B-gap as the weak side inside linebacker, kicking the three inside linebackers over to create kind of like the stack 4-4 four, four look. Nobody really had great answers for this formation all year, if you ask me. Montgomery here is able to hit for 14 yards, I think on the third possession of the game. Of course, the Lions were rolling offensively in the first half against the 49ers. Very rare for me to say that Ben Johnson is predictable, and, and maybe I shouldn't say that. Certainly not predictable over four quarters at all, but this formation, Trey Wing, two tight ends on the same side, receiver, quarterback running back on the midline with the quarterback under center. You can bet early when you see this formation, it's a run play to the side where you've got two tight ends, which is exactly the opposite of how I presented the previous formation to you with two tight ends on the same side, but two receivers on the back side. So hopefully you can see or get a little bit of a of an inkling of how NFL defenses players have to try to adjust on the field to the different formations if they choose to. In this case, we got another example of the Vikings not adjusting at all, not defending the front side run. Con they did get an unblocked safety there, don't get me wrong. Jameer Gibbs runs out of bounds for a seven-yard gain. This is the seventh possession, I believe, the first time that the Lions played the Vikings. And you can see how easily they get the edge by taking two tight ends, double-teaming the edge defender, which I think is Hunter, no direct force player, so the safety's got to come up from depth to do so. And Gibbs is just able to outrun the guy and break the tackle. End zone angle, same view. you got the backside safety. Again, threatening a blitz off the edge. Forty again is unblocked, but he's so far aligned on the backside that it's an easy combo for the center and left guard to occupy him, and people have closed off the front side. Sewell has closed off here. The right guard has closed off here. And you've got these two working the front side double team or combo, I should say. And they've clogged up this strong side inside linebacker. It's a beautiful concept. Just run it to the side where there's two tight ends and then go play action once it's been established. Slightly different variation of it here. Generally, you're getting this to the field. You can see the ball is in the middle of the field, however. There is no field and boundary because it's directly in the middle of the field. Do give you two tight ends, which I think illustrates my point even more. There is no wide side of the field. Where the tendency is for Ben Johnson, at least from 2023, in my opinion, is 12 personnel, Trey Wing, or in this case, just Trey. Some people call it tight end trips. 
running the ball to that side early to establish the run and get the defense to adjust to it. Once again, weak side of the formation. The Vikings have their weak side safety there. Uh, basically occupying nothing. Because they don't have a nickel defender, they needed to roll the other way. Not that the, the Lions don't ever run the ball to the weak side. It's that the Vikings never forced them to out of 12 personnel. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. One of the biggest benefits to utilizing 12 personnel in 2023 was the versatility that Sam Laporta offered as a, as a wide receiver, a guy who could actually line up as an X wide receiver, an outside wide receiver, if you will, and win against outside corners in the NFL, which sounds crazy to, uh, to talk about because even some of the best tight ends in the NFL, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, George Kittles, and others, do not do that against starting outside level corners with the propensity and efficiency that Sam Laporta does, in my opinion. So Ben Johnson was able to line up with 12 personnel against an opposing team's base defense and then line up in spread formations to attack players who perhaps weren't used to a, accustomed to defending those parts of the field. I kind of mentioned it earlier with the twin wing formation, the curl flat area being open, and that's not exactly what happens here, but look at – what they've done with Brock Wright and Sam Laporta line up Brock Wright in a typical tight end alignment, number three strong. You have this classic Ben Johnson uh, route being run by Brock Wright across the field, and then Laporta as the backside X making a tough contested catch, I think against Tyreek Stevenson um, on a third and two. You line up in, on third and two in 12 personnel. The other team is certainly going to respond with their base defense. Some cases, like the Buffalo Bills, their base is a 4-2-5 nickel. Generally, you're going to be able to attack with the pass against a team's base 4-3 or base 3-4 if you've got a guy like Laporta. Once again, this is empty against the Bucks at home in the divisional round. Brock Wright down at the downside. Sam Laporta up at the top in the slot. This is a third and four. I felt like this was a third down usage that illustrated how Ben Johnson was comfortable attacking defenses, attacking their base defense. Happens to be an amazing throw by Goff and a great catch by Laporta against a starting outside corner, in this case Davis, number 24, who's a brilliant football player if you ask me. Tampa Bay happens to respond with their nickel defense. You can see there's a DB lined up here and here, so two, and then corner, corner and Ivy and safety, so nickel personnel, five defensive backs on the field because it's a third and four. We know Ben Johnson and the Lions will run the ball on any third down situation up to and including third and ten. I think showing these to you illustrates how he'll utilize 12 personnel to attack base defenses. Great matchup on the road, I think week six between Laporta and Levante David. Also, to, one thing to note, this inversion of the tight end versus the two receivers that are on the field. That's Brock Wright up as the outside receiver in a trips alignment, and you have the two inside, the two actual wide receivers lined up in the slot. So really forcing the defense's hand to declare whether it's going to be man or zone. In this case, the Bucks trust Levante David, who had an amazing season. Uh, once again, if you ask me, I would love to do a longer film study video about him, but they trust him to, to play man. Against um, Laporta, they actually matched up this way. I drew it up uh, wrong the first time. The outside linebacker is going to go ahead and take Montgomery. And then David, who was lined up more as the mic, takes Laporta. First time that they showed this, Laporta is able to get the catch against David. Twice later on in the game, Goff and Laporta are unable to, com to complete it. My point in illustrating that one, first of all, it's a great concept, a great way to force the defense to declare their coverage, in that case, man by the Bucks, And it gives Jarrett Goff pre-snap some great intel about where he can go matchup-wise, where he thinks he's got the best matchup. Of course, him and Ben Johnson and the coaches would have looked at it during the week uh, in film study to kind of figure that out. A couple of unsuccessful throws, still 12 personnel, two tight ends on the field, trying to attack with the pass against the team's base defense. Happens to be first and 10 uh, there against the Vikings. Generally, everything the Lions ran worked against them. Very similar formation. You got a closed alignment down here. I think that's uh, Brock Wright. A trips alignment, more typical to the field side, and the running back on the midline with the quarterback under center. Again, play action concept happens to be incomplete to St. Brown. 
I thought there was some contact here before the play, but it's a first and 10 in completion. There's certainly plenty of times where they go 12 personnel, spread people out, and are able to run the football. One more um, unsuccessful attempt. This one is a smash concept to Laporta up at the top side. Both tight ends on the same side of the formation to the field. Running back set to the boundary where we know Ben Johnson likes to attack. And you can see Tampa Bay's having – it's an unsuccessful play. Tampa Bay's having – Difficulty lining up to this out of their base defense. Three, four personnel on the field, five, two, if you will, with only four DBs. Wrong route concept just happens to be called here to try to attack them to the field. I think you got a lot of space. Um, other concepts would have probably been more successful because there's one less defender to the field. In this case, if they were able to bring this receiver, Brock Wright, is it's actually a tight end, you know, to the field in some manner, they could have put more conflict on the field side defenders. As it stands, the corner did a great job of passing off Laporta on the vertical and then taking over St. Brown into the flats, pushing him, funneling Laporta, that is, into the safety. Golf, if you ask me, threw this in a location where he knew that it was going to be incomplete because he didn't have anything that he wanted out of that concept. Some anomalous stuff here where they run the football out of 12 personnel. But this down sweep that I call it, other people have uh, more advanced names, no problem. Uh, take whatever information you want and use it on your own. But down sweep basically is going to have one lineman, in this case the guard, going to kick out. And then the second lineman uh, pulling and wrapping through. Little hesitation step by Gibbs and then delayed handoff between him and golf. It actually ends up only going for seven or eight yards. I feel like the Ben Johnson offense utilizes all personnel groupings to attack. This is fourth down against the Bucks in the, in the divisional round, by the way, the touchdown for Reynolds. Um, I feel like Ben Johnson's offense does a great job of attacking defenses out of any personnel grouping, 11, 12, 21, even 13, or any of the jumbo stuff that he does with Dan Skipper on the field. In my opinion, 12, personnel is almost the one that's the most versatile because Laporta, one of the two tight ends, can line up at wide receiver and be so effective across multiple alignments, and he can be used as a blocker at, at the point of attack. Not saying that Ben Johnson's offense wouldn't be just as effective or similarly effective without a guy like Laporta on the roster, but if you ask me, he's a multiplier because of how you're able to utilize him in the pass game, in the run game, and force defenses really to not be able to respond to each potential formation and play concept that evolves from it. It's a fun thing for me to try to do to break down the Ben Johnson offense for you guys. I probably don't do it justice. If you know someone who does a better job than me, feel free to let me know in the comment section so I can watch some of their stuff and, and learn things because um, I don't think Ben Johnson comes from a, quote, tree of offenses, and that what that's what makes it so much fun to me. I do have it on my schedule to complete an offense on Sean, a, a film study on Sean McVay's offense with the Rams. I feel like it's drastically different than so many others in the NFL. Ben Johnson's offense gets kind of grouped in with Shanahan McVay stuff, and I don't think that that's uh, entirely accurate. I think his offense is something that him and Dan Campbell have constructed together. Would it look differently if Ben Johnson had moved on or when he does move on to another franchise? Sure, I guess it will, depending on the player personnel that he's got. It's probably the most fun one for me to break down because everything seems very intentional, not just the plays that are run and the direction that they're run, but when they're run during a game, timing-wise, and when they're run during the course of a season. I feel like things are very intentional and built in a progression, and that doesn't look to be the case with so many other offenses um, in the NFL that are less successful than Detroit's has since he's taken over as offensive coordinator. You guys let me know if you appreciate the videos. I probably missed some elements to the 12 personnel attack that Detroit used in 2023. I think Laporta adds another flavor or multiple flavors, gives Ben Johnson more options, really, in the passing attack, and makes the 12 personnel group probably one that um, is the most interesting to me, not just for Detroit, but all the way across the NFL. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study look at how Ben Johnson uses 12 personnel and multiple formations to attack NFL teams' base defenses, be it 4-3 or 3-4, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it somewhere on social media to help this content get more reach.